miss you so much uh, and what a pity that I cannot give you a normal lesson today. But there is nothing to do, so let's try at least to have some kind of distant lesson. For this lesson we'll need a presentation that I prepared for you and we'll need our textbook, I hope you remember it. So prepare your textbooks, your copybooks, your pens or pencils and let's start. So today we are working on our last lesson in the fifth unit, Health and Environment. And today's lesson is devoted to green life. So the topic of our today's lesson is do the green things. Uh, we spoke about environment for so long. As I remember, we had such topics in the ninth form, in the tenth form, and now it's a kind of summing up of what we have already learned about this issue. So, do you remember what are the biggest current environmental problems in the world? Let's see, let's revise them a little. First of all, it's waste production. Uh, can you believe that the average person produces 4.3 pounds of waste per day? Mm, that is so much. And much of this waste ends up in landfills. That's a big problem for our environment and for our ecology. Then, deforestation. Uh, the demands of an increasing population has resulted in increasing levels of deforestation. Current estimates state that the planet is losing 80,000 acres of tropical forest per day. That's also so much. Next, water pollution. Uh, I'm sure you have heard about it. Water pollution means that we are losing our fresh water. Fresh water is crucial for life on the earth. Uh, yet more sources are being polluted through human activities each year. And of course, mm, a bit connected, a bit interconnected problem is acid rains. Acid rain comes as a result of air pollution, mostly through chemicals released into the environment, then fuel is burned. Its effects are most clearly seen in aquatic ecosystems, where increasing acidity in the water can lead to animal death. Next, ozone layer depletion uh, or holes in the ozone layer. I'm sure you've heard about them. Ozone depletion is caused by the release of chemicals, primarily chlorine and bromine into the atmosphere. Then next, air pollution. Air pollution is becoming an increasingly dangerous problem as it is directly linked to other environmental issues such as acid rain. As you can see, a lot of um, problems are connected with chemical industry, with um, other industries. So maybe it's a topic not of English lesson, but of chemical lesson more, and physical lesson more than of English. So natural resource use. Recent studies have shown that humanity uses so many natural resources that we would need almost 1.5 Earth to cover our needs. But the problem is that we have only one Earth to live on. So, there are two ways. To stop using our natural resources or to find another planet to live. Next, climate change. Mm, maybe it's the biggest problem and it's a kind of, kind of result of all problems listed below. The majority of the issues previously listed contribute or are linked to climate change. Statistics created by NASA state that global temperatures have risen by 1.7 degrees Fahrenheit since 1880, which is directly linked to a reduction in Arctic ice of 13.3% per decade. So let's sum up. What are the biggest environmental problems? Of course, there are a lot of them. Some lists give us 35 problems. Other lists give 50 main problems. But I think uh, we need less than 10 for our lessons because uh, we are just studying English, not studying ecology. So, waste production, then deforestation, of course, water pollution and acid drains, ozone layer depletion, air pollution, natural resource use, and the result of all this, climate change. So, as we know the problem, we should think what to do, uh, how to solve this problem. 
And to do that, we should be able to talk about it, first of all. So, uh, let's revise some lexical that we need for discussion these problems, for speaking about this. Uh, here is the list of the words, and you can find this list in your student's book. Uh, it's exercise number one on page 145. So you may open these textbooks and follow me. We have such words as acid. Acid is a chemical that is used in many household goods and I'm sure you heard about it during your chemical lessons. Carbon is also from the field of chemistry. Carbon, uh, as I remember, it's connected with coal and also it's connected with diamonds. But I'm not that good at chemistry, to tell the truth. Next, disposal. Disposable is something that you use only once and then recycle or throw away. Next, solar. Solar is everything connected with the sun. Sun energy, um, some other things that we get from sun, they are named solar and some noun. Endangered. Endangered are those who or which are on the age of extinction. So something very rare. Mostly we use it for animals, birds, and some living beings. Energy. Oh, energy is something that we need in the morning to wake up, to get up and go to work. Everybody needs energy. Ozone. As I remember, ozone is something around our planet. Oil. Mm, oil is something that we need for our petrol, for our fuel, for our um, industries, and which is taken out from the ground. Greenhouse. Greenhouse. It's a little house with transparent walls, uh, which is used for growing plants, flowers, when it's too cold outside. Renewable. Renewable is something that you again, again uh, that you get that you can get again and again. Suitable, something that suits you, that suits your purposes. Unleaded, unleaded is something from the field of petrol. It's some kind of petrol. I don't have a car, so I'm not that good at that. But if you have a car uh, at the gas stations, at the petrol stations, you can see this where it's unleaded. Next, bottle. Everybody knows what bottle is. And fossil. Fossil is something very old that is taken out from the ground for our uses. Okay, so we have this list of words. Acid, carbon, disposal, solar, endangered, energy, ozone, oil, greenhouse, renewable, suitable, unleaded, bottle, and fossil. And as you can see in our textbook, uh, there is the second column, B with another list of the words. Conservation, bank, species, effect, petrol, energy, sleek, products, rain, power, monoxide, layer, waste, and fuel. So, first of all, before using these words, we have to match them, to make some word expressions, to make some word pairs. Let's try to do that. So, we need our desk, we need our board, sorry, not desk, board. And we'll try to match these words to get some word expressions. So, the first, acid, rain. I hope you remember this combination. So, rain is out of our list. Carbon. I'm sure we use these words, carbon dioxide, but this time we need carbon monoxide. Then, disposable. Disposable, if you are not sure, let's leave this word for the end of our list. Let's wait. Solar. Solar. Energy, solar power. Solar, what? Solar bank, maybe? So, let's wait. Endangered. It's about animals. Endangered species. I'm sure you remember that. Where are species? Sp 
species are out, then energy, energy, conservation energy, waste, so let's wait, ozone, ozone layer, no other variants, here it is, oil, oil slick, that is what often happens in the ocean, greenhouse, greenhouse, of course greenhouse effect. Renewable, renewable energy that we can get again and again. Energy, then suitable. Oh, there are a lot of variants, so let's wait. Unleaded, I told you it's about petrol, so unleaded petrol. Then bottle. Hmm. I think our town was one of the first places where we could find bottle banks for plastic bottles. So bottle bank. Bottle bank. Then fossil fossil fuel. Of course. So, what words are left? Disposable, solar, suitable, and energy. Disposable, of course, products. They are products that get, you can use again, uh, you can use only once, sorry. You cannot use again and again. Then, energy, conservation, Conservation, okay, waste and power, waste and power, solar, waste or solar power, of course solar power, and that means that we have suitable waste, uh, it sounds a bit strange, but maybe it's just a part of bigger word expression. Maybe it's a part of suitable waste disposal or something like that. So don't, mm, don't take it very, uh, very serious. I think we'll use it in some sentence. Okay, so we have got such pairs, such pairs of words. Let's look again. Acid rain, carbon monoxide, disposal products, solar power, endangered species, energy conservation, ozone layer, oil slick, greenhouse effect, renewable energy, suitable waste, unleaded petrol, bottle bank, and fossil fuel. Okay, now it's time to do the second part of this exercise. We have to use these words. Uh, what do we learn words for? Of course, for using them. So, here are 10 sentences. And we have to put these 14 word pairs into such sentences, into these sentences. That means that four pairs will not be used. Okay, so let's look there. Mm -hmm. Screens out dangerous ultraviolet rays from the sun. Uh, what can stop ultraviolet rays, only ozone layer. So the first will be the ozone layer screens out dangerous ultraviolet rays. Number two, stands beside collecting points for other recyclable waste like paper, metal and plastic. I'm sure you have seen such, uh, such places in Kievsky block, uh, next to the post office, uh, uh, next to the central square, uh, where people put um, plastic, paper, metal and other things separately. So what can be there in this sentence? 
I think bottle bank will be good for it. Bottle bank, it's a place where we put, uh, where we put our plastic bottles for recycling. Number three, in recent times, agriculture has become a major energy user. Hmm. So, except of chemistry, I should know agriculture well to do this exercise. Uh, I should think. Number four is the conversion of the sun energy into heat and electricity. So, in the first sentence is definitely solar power. That means in the third exercise, and in the third sentence, we can take fossil fuel. Okay, again, number three, fossil fuel. Number four, solar power. Number five, from October 1990, all new cars manufactured will have to be able to run on renewable energy. There is only one suitable variant. Number six, the seriously threatens marine life around the island. Uh, it's about oil. Oil, uh, oil slick. Number seven, destroys trees and damaged buildings. What destroys trees? Fire, but we don't have this word in our list. What else destroys trees and damages buildings? Uh, only acid rain. So I think we'll take acid rain for the sevens. Number eight is a highly poisonous gas, mostly produced by cars. Uh, I remember the combination carbon dioxide, but here is a, uh, a combination of carbon monoxide. I should consult our chemistry teachers to distinguish between those two phenomena. But I think carbon monoxide may be good for this sentence. Number nine, society should protect from extinction. Extinction, it's something that dies, that dies out. So the good, uh, the good um, variant for this sentence is endangered species. And number 10, global warming is otherwise known as the greenhouse effect. That is, we, uh, that is what we hear every day, maybe, on our TV, on radio, about greenhouse effect and global warming um, all around the world. So, um, let's look at the last sentence. It's a bit diff different from others. Global warming in otherwise known as the greenhouse effect. If you look at this sentence, we'll see that it's different because uh, another grammar structure is used here. Uh, I hope you remember about passive voice, that we have two voices in English language. Active voice, then subject does something by himself or herself. And passive voice, then action is done on the subject. For example, cat eats mice. Cat is active. He does it by himself. He eats mice. And mice are eaten by cat. Mice are passive here. They do nothing except they are eaten. So, here is an example. Global warming in otherwise known as the greenhouse effect. It's a passive voice, as we have is known. That means that we use present simple passive, something that is happening um, day by day, usually, um, as a routine action. Of course, we could use active voice. We otherwise know global warming as the greenhouse effect. But in this case, we have to know who does this action. So, it's up to you to choose um, what uh, voice to use, active or passive. Uh, but let's just practice passive voice to make you ready for using it. So the main formula of passive voice is to be plus the third form of the verb. You remember that there are uh, regular verbs and irregular verbs. You are 11 formers, so I needn't remi remind you about this. Uh, on page 147, there is a small table, small grammar table, that can help you with doing uh, grammar exercises and with using that uh, passive voice. Very often when we use passive voice, we use so-called 
reported uh, reporting verbs. Here is the list of reporting verbs. Agree, announce, assume, believe, calculate, claim. Of course, we have our favorite ones. Uh, mostly we used uh, understand, think, say, uh, report, claim, consider. But as you can see, the list is much longer. Uh, here is this list and you can see all of these verbs. When we use passive verbs, passive voice, if we know who, uh, who was the object of our action, we use personal passive construction. Here it is, personal passive construction. So we use subject plus reporting verb plus the, uh, in the passive voice plus to plus infinitive. If we don't know who was the actor, uh, we use it and who was um, the receiver of the action. We use is, it plus reporting verb in the passive voice plus that plus subject and verb. Let's look at the examples. So, if I know who is the subject. He is said to have visited the most beautiful park in our city. We have normal subject who, uh, he. He is said. Okay, we may use another example. For example, we may say that uh, we are considering to be a hard-working student, I'm sure. We are considering to be a hard-working student because we always work hard. If we don't know the subject, we may use it or they, so something neutral, something that is not personal. It is known that my grandfather likes hot weather. It is known, we don't say who knows that, just it is known, like a fact. Or it is believed that black cats bring bad luck. I don't believe that. But if some people believe so, I must say that it is believed that black cats bring bad luck. Uh, in one of these formulas here, we can see infinitive. We can see this word infinitive. So what are the forms of infinitive? If we speak about simple actions, it's two plus zero form of the verb to protect, for example. If continuous, if we speak about prolonged action, about action that is uh, on a go, uh, we can use to be plus our verb with ing ending. Then perfect, if we speak about something that is already done. To have protected, as an example, to have plus the third form of the verb. And perfect continuous, the most difficult form, to have been plus uh, our verb with ing ending. Let's look how it works. So, some examples, some more examples. Scientists consider global warming the main problem of modern world. It's personal. Passive construction, we have normal subject, scientists. Oh, sorry, it's not uh, passive at all. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's not passive, it's active. Scientists consider global warming the main problem of modern world. Uh, let's change this active into passive. Global warming is considered to be the main problem of modern world. Or global warming is believed to have become the main problem of modern world. It depends, um, it depends on you what, um, what uh, tense you would like to use. If you speak about something general or if you speak about results, so it's up to you how to build these constructions. It is believed that global warming has become the main problem of modern world, is another example of this sentence. Uh, for practicing, we have exercise number six on page 147. So let's look at this exercise. Uh, we'll do three sentences together, and the other seven sentences will be your home task, will be a home assignment to do. So let's try to do it together. Unfortunately, I cannot see you and I cannot ask you, uh, but let's try. So, people believe that they have killed the animals during the night. Uh, we are going to give two variants, impersonal and personal. Impersonal, eat. In the original sentence, people believed, so we speak about past. In passive voice, past simple looks like it was believed. It was believed that people had killed the animals during the night. 
Another variant with they, with personal subject, personal passive construction. They. Also, we use pass uh, passive voice and past simple tense. They were believed to have killed the animals during the night. They were believed, it's clear, because we speak about past action, uh, just uh, like a fact. So we use past simple. Then, according to our formula, we have to use uh, we have to use two plus infinitive. If we speak about something that have already been done, we must use this construction. Perfect. So we have they were believed to have killed the animals during the night. The next number two. Ancient people thought that the stars would fall on them. Let's also try to give two variants. First, with it, with impersonal passive voice, and the second as a personal construction. So, it was thought, somebody thought, it was thought that the stars would fall on ancient people. Or, let's use personal subject, the stars were thought to fall on ancient people. They said, they agree that the Egyptians have built the pyramids. It is agreed that the Egyptians have built the pyramids. Or, the Egyptians are agreed to have built the pyramids. Uh, I will upload this presentation uh, with some um, tables containing grammar rules on my blog, so you can find it there. And I hope it will help you uh, with doing your home exercise, because other seven sentences will be yours. You, you will have to do them by yourself. Well, as we started speaking about ecology and about environment, uh, and as summer uh, will come soon, I hope, we should think about such phenomena as ecotourism. Do you know what is ecotourism? Ecotourism, also called sun-stable tour tourism, can be defined as a variety of travel practices, but it all comes down to a general set of ideas. As an ecotourist, you decide to travel in a way that shows respect to nature and doesn't contribute to its degradation. So, uh, if you are ecotourist, you should be very, very friendly to nature and doesn't harm it in any way. Mm, I know about some ecotourist routes, even here in Ukraine. And of course, there are a lot of such routes, a lot of such companies which offer you ecotourist um, travels. So, maybe in summer, you will decide to go somewhere as an ecotourist. So, let's get ready for our summer travel. Now, we will listen to a short conversation, to a short story uh, about ecotourism. And our task is, first of all, to understand what ecotourism is. And we have also a very simple task, just to put these six sentences in the correct order. So, you will hear these topics in the text. And your task is just to put down um, the sentences in the right order. Please prepare your papers, put down numbers from 1 to 6, because we have 6 sentences, and then just mark the letter of the sentence, of the proper sentence, next to the proper number. And if you are ready, we may start. So, only 6 numbers, it's not difficult. Mm, are you ready? Then let's go. Tourism will always have an impact on the places visited. Sometimes the impact is good but often it's negative. For example, if lots of people visit one place, then this can damage the environment. The question is, how can we minimize the problems without preventing people from traveling and visiting places? The main aim of ecotourism is to reduce the negative impact that tourism has on the environment and local people. The idea is to encourage tourists to think about what they do when they visit a place. It's great to talk about protecting the environment. But how do you actually do this? There are a number of key points. Tourists shouldn't drop litter, they should stay on the pass, they shouldn't interfere with the wildlife, 
and they should respect local customs and traditions. Some people see ecotourism as a contradiction. They say that any tourism needs infrastructure, roads, airports and hotels. The more tourists that visit a place, the more of these are needed, and by building more of these, you can't avoid damaging the environment. But of course, things aren't so black and white. Living in a place of natural beauty doesn't mean that you shouldn't benefit from things like better roads. As long as the improvements benefit the local people and not just the tourists, and the local communities are consulted on plans and changes, then is there really a problem? In 2002, the United Nations celebrated the International Year of Ecotourism. Over the past 20 years, more and more people have started taking eco-holidays. In countries such as Ecuador, Nepal, Costa Rica and Kenya, ecotourism represents a significant proportion of the tourist industry. Okay, so as for me, this story is built very logically, so, uh, and it's well structured, uh, so you can guess even without listening, but we'll listen for the second time. Uh, what sentences should you put in order? Sorry, I haven't told you at the very beginning of this uh, exercise. Uh, is more infrastructure always bad? What is ecotourism? Is tourism always good? How popular is ecotourism? What exactly does ecotourism mean? And is ecotourism really possible? So let's listen for the second time. And uh, now you should make a choice. Put the right numbers. I hope your numbers will be right, will be correct. So let's listen again. Recording 21. Tourism will always have an impact on the places visited. Sometimes the impact is good, but often it's negative. For example, if lots of people visit one place, then this can damage the environment. The question is, how can we minimize the problems without preventing people from traveling and visiting places? The main aim of ecotourism is to reduce the negative impact that tourism has on the environment and local people. The idea is to encourage tourists to think about what they do when they visit a place. It's great to talk about protecting the environment, but how do you actually do this? There are a number of key points. Tourists shouldn't drop litter, they should stay on the pass, they shouldn't interfere with the wildlife, and they should respect local customs and traditions. Some people see ecotourism as a contradiction. They say that any tourism needs infrastructure, roads, airports, and hotels. The more tourists that visit a place, the more of these are needed, and by building more of these, you can't avoid damaging the environment. But of course, Things aren't so black and white. Living in a place of natural beauty doesn't mean that you shouldn't benefit from things like better roads. As long as the improvements benefit the local people and not just the tourists, and the local communities are consulted on plans and changes, then is there really a problem? In 2002, the United Nations celebrated the International Year of Ecotourism. Over the past 20 years, more and more people have started taking eco-holidays. In countries such as Ecuador, Nepal, Costa Rica and Kenya, ecotourism represents a significant proportion of the tourist industry. Okay, so are you ready to check? Then I think we should start with the most common question. Is tourism, is tourism always good? Uh, what is the next sentence? To my mind, it should be Sentence under letter B. What is ecotourism? If we are going to speak about it, first of all, we should give some definition to it. The third is what exactly does ecotourism mean? Because the girl tried to explain us uh, different aspects of ecotourism. Then what is number four in your list? In my list, it's letter A. Then after that, letter F. And finally, letter six. If you have the same answers, that means that we think in the same way. Okay, I think that's enough for today. So, your home assignment will be to complete exercises from exercise 6, that were grammar exercises, as you remember. Then, to read the text on page 164, it's exercise number 3, and do some tasks on this text, because uh, exercise 4 and exercise 5 are connected with this text. So, actually, you have grammar task and one lexical task that is not that 
much. Uh, on my blog you may find a form for filling. I would like you to fill the form with your answers. Then I will be able to check how you did that exercise and what you understood, what you revised during our today's meeting. So, take care of yourself. Hope to see you here in Lyceum very soon. Bye.